Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Massebi, and today we're going to take a look at the Luxury Black Card. But first, if you are new here, we're all about how to maximize the value of your credit cards, so how to get the most cash back and also how to travel for free. If that sounds interesting, then subscribe to our channel, but let's get started. If you're looking for a good travel credit card, then this is the wrong video for you. So I would either watch one of our other videos where we do talk about those, but the reason we're doing this is basically just to look at why this is a bad card and how they can potentially fix it. The MasterCard Black card was created before the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and its main competitor was the Amex Platinum card and the City Prestige card. The main problem with the MasterCard Black card is that it doesn't really have any redeeming factors to make it a viable travel credit card. Its biggest selling point was that it was a metal card, and again, back in the day, maybe that was useful, but right now, even if you look at the Amazon Prime card, that's metal and there's no annual fee. With an annual fee of $495 and $195 per authorized user per year, this card makes no sense. The card probably has five benefits, but even if you add them all up, it still doesn't really make sense. So the first one is that you get a $100 travel credit every year. So here you're taking the annual fee of $495 and it's basically going down to $395. Let's say in the first year you end up getting this credit twice, so $495 minus $100 minus $100, that is $295. If you compare that with any other premium credit card, you're actually losing a lot of money. So if the Chase Sapphire Reserve $450 annual fee minus $300, so that is first year as well as in the future years, that is an effective annual fee of $150. With the City Prestige, you have a $450 annual fee, but you have a $250 travel credit. In the first year, you actually get that twice, so you're getting $500 in value. So you're actually getting paid by City to have that card. So in the first year, you're making $50, and in future years, you're only paying $200. With the Amex Platinum card, you're paying a $550 annual fee, but in the first year, you're getting the travel credit twice, so the travel credit is $200, and you also get an Uber credit, so assuming that you can value that at its fair price if you do use Uber, that's $200. You can't double count that given how it works. So in year one, you're actually coming out ahead because you're getting $200, plus $200, so $400 for the travel credit, and then another $200 for the Uber, so $600 in value for a $550 annual fee, and long-term, the effective annual fee, again, assuming you use Uber, is $150. So if the Luxury Black card in year one and long-term, you're paying more money than any of these other cards, and again, you're not getting a sign-up bonus, so that's a really big consideration. In the past, the Luxury Black card did have a bonus, but right now it doesn't. If you consider these sign-up bonuses for the Chase Sapphire Reserve for the City Prestige, that could easily be $500 to $1,000 in value. If they want to improve this card, then they're going to need to add a sign-up bonus and also to make the travel credit a bit bigger because right now it's not competitive at all. The second benefit is that in the first year, you get a $100 global entry credit or you can use it towards TSA PreCheck. So again, the main problem here is that all the other cards we mentioned have this credit as well. And the thing is, a lot of other travel credit cards that don't even have annual fees now have this credit. For example, if you look at the First National Bank of Omaha's Travel Elite or Travel Elite credit card, it has no annual fee. You get travel credits, meaning that you're getting paid to have the card and use it. So it's probably one of the best no annual fee cards out there for this reason. You get global entry credits and you get a sign up bonus. What about spend? So you get 1x points back whenever you use the card. If you redeem those points towards cash back, it's 1.5 cents per point. And if you redeem it towards travel, it's two cents per point. But if you compare it to other cards, even ones that have no annual fees, this makes zero sense. The Chase Freedom Unlimited gives you 1.5x ultimate reward points on all of your spend. So if you do redeem it towards cash, you're getting one cents per point, so 1.5%. And if you redeem it towards travel, you're getting 1.5 to 2 cents per point, meaning that you're getting 2.25 to 3% return on your spend. Another example would be the City Double Cash card where you get 2% back on all of your purchases, but here you're getting cash back instead of 2% towards travel. And obviously you can use that cash back on travel or on your rent or on investments. So here it would make more sense to get the Double Cash over this one. If they want to make this card competitive, they need to add transfer partners, they need to add a higher rate of return on all of your transactions and also probably better redemption value. One thing that really annoys me is that they have a lot of charts comparing the American Express card with their card and they use the same value but they're basically not considering how hard it is to get those points. It's like if I had a chart of Starwood points and Marriott points saying that hey 25,000 points get me this much versus 25,000 Marriott points which gets me this much, that's not really a fair comparison because you're comparing apples and oranges. To me that doesn't make any sense. Another benefit is that with this card you have access to a luxury concierge but the main problem is that all of these cards have concierge programs too. I haven't tried this concierge program because I don't have this card, 
but from my experience, most of them are pretty useless. So they can kind of give you information that you can already find online from Googling. So if you know how to use a computer, you're probably better off than them because they're doing the same thing you're going to do. And the only one that has really been helpful has been the American Express one. So they have relationships with restaurants and also to venues and events. So that might be helpful to get like hard to get stuff. But beyond that, like if I can do it online, I'll do it myself. The final benefit, and this one's a bit interesting, is that you get free luxury gifts. But the main problems are that you don't know what gifts they are, you don't know when you're going to get them, and you don't know if you're going to get them. People on Reddit have mentioned that they got free pens worth about $130. So here you kind of have a few questions. So firstly, whether you would personally pay that much for a pen. If not, then you can't really value it at $130. Maybe you value it at $50. Bucks. The second thing to consider is that they're personalized, meaning that reselling them is either going to be impossible or very difficult, or you're going to take a loss. If I was someone paying $130 for a pen, I wouldn't want someone else's name on it. Eduardo, who's one of our viewers, mentioned that he got two pairs of Ray-Bans and one flashlight. The flashlight was worth probably about 50 bucks, and the Ray-Bans were worth about $100 each. I'm guessing he got two pairs of Ray-Bans because he had an authorized user, but it's really hard to value these at the fair market price unless you would have otherwise bought them yourself. Personally, I'd rather get a different credit card that has better perks and has a lower effective annual fee, and then just use the savings, let's say I save $100 or $150 with a different card. That way I'm not being forced to buy Ray-Bans, I can buy a mechanical keyboard, I can buy a new mouse, I can buy things that I personally care about instead of hoping for a really valuable gift via this black box. At the end of the day, this card doesn't make any sense because there are cards that have lower annual fees and lower effective annual fees and also have better perks. I'd strongly encourage you to consider those cards instead of this one because to me this is a negative expected value card, meaning that by getting it you're actually losing money. With a lot of these other cards you actually get a lot of benefits or you get a lot of perks that kind of make it worthwhile to either break even or to come out ahead. With this black card it just doesn't make any sense. So I hope that was helpful and let me know if you guys have any questions. My question for you guys is do you think they're going to rebrand this card to make it more competitive or do you think they really don't care? Let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.